Hey everyone, TK here. Today we're embarking on an exciting journey in our Mernstack video series. Specifically, we're building the UI for login and registration page using ReactJS. It's going to be awesome. In this video, we lay the groundwork by crafting a minimalistic, clean, and visually stunning UI using ReactJS. We also have a game character's wallpaper on the left side. It's not only impress your users, but also set a stage for seamless login and registration experience. But this is just part one of the series. Stay tuned for the future videos where we we'll connect this UI to backend using MongoDB, Express.js, and Node.js to enable actual login and registration. Let's get started building an awesome login and registration page. First, we create a fresh folder for our project. Open your terminal. We'll type npn init vite to set up a React app named client. Choose React as a framework and JavaScript as a language. Navigate into client folder using cd client. We we'll run npm install to automatically grab all necessary packages. For styling, we we'll add Bootstrap to create a slick layout. Acer try the team for handling HTTP requests and response. And finally, React Router DOM comes into handle smooth navigation between different parts of our app. Ready to see our project comes to life, run npm run dev. Open this URL in your browser, our project is alive and kicking. Now we'll be creating a login page using React and Bootstrap. First thing we need to include Bootstrap in our project. Head over to app.jsx and import the bootstrap CSS. Next, we create a separate component for our login form. Create a new file named signup.jsx. Now in app.jsx, import the signup component and render it within your JSX. Now let's focus on the signup.js5. We define a functional component using an arrow function. We start by creating the overall layout using bootstrap classes. We use a div with class name, container, vh100, dflex, justify content center, align item center. For viewers unfamiliar with Bootstrap, I have a video about Bootstrap tutorial for you to learn the basic. This video will focus on practical application of these classes, assuming a foundational understanding. Inside the container, we create another div with class row. This establishes a row within the Bootstrap grid system. We can also set the width to 100% using W100 style H700 pixel. Inside this div, I have to another div with class name column 6 and P0. And inside the first div, we use an image element to display an image. Remember to replace the sort attribute with the actual path to your image. This image is sourced from the project internal access. For access to the original file, you can visit my GitHub repository, the link for which is provided below the description. We wrap the image in a div with classes position relative and overflow hidden. 
to control its positioning and handle overflowing content. While the responsiveness of the design isn't perfect, the series prioritizes building the front end visuals and establishing a connection to the back end. You can certainly tackle responsiveness on your own and it will automatically benefit for functionality of your application. Then we create a second dip with some classes that center the content vertically and horizontally. We also set a dark background color using inline styles. Inside this dip, we have another dip with a heading H1 element displaying the title register. We style it with a white text and a specific font size. Next, we create a form element and set the width to 350 pixels. Inside the form, we have several sections for different information. We start with a section for the username. This section gives a div with a class for spacing and white text. Within this div, we have a label for the name input field explaining what information is needed. Oh, I forgot a div right here. Finally, we have the actual input field with the tie set to text. We also disable auto completion says name and class for styling and define the background and text color using inline style we repeat the same structure for the email and password session creating separate div element with label and input field We create another section for a creamin checkbox. This section uses a div with classes for spacing, white text, and flexbox alignment. Inside this div, we have an input element of type checkbox. We have a label explaining the equipment. and using non-breaking space to separate style text for terms and conditions privacy policy finally we have a button for submitting the registration form it's styled with specific classes for color background, rounded corners, white text, and full width. Below the form tag, I have a P tag with message or via social network with the class name, text white, MT3, text center. Then, we can optionally add social login options using icons from a library like React Icons. We will need to install this library. And choose the desired icon from their website. We then import the icons and display them within the button style appropriately.
I repeat the same step for the other social icons. Then I wrap on four buttons inside a div with class name dflex just if I contain center. We display a message about existing accounts and provide a link to the login page using the link component from React Router DOM. Unfortunately, this approach resulted in an error because I hadn't wrapped the entire application within the browser router before using React Router DOM components. The link is styled similarly to the register button. To ensure user agree the policy before signing up, I implemented several steps using React use state hook. I create a state variable's name is check using use state. The initial state is phone, indicating the user hasn't agreed yet. The checkbox elements yield the check props set to each check. This synchronizes the checkbox check stay with the each check variable. An on change event handler on the checkbox updates the each check stay based on the checkbox current stay. The register button class changed dynamically using a ternary operator. If each check is phone, the user has an agree, the class name is button secondary, otherwise it's button in four. Similarly to the class, the disable attributes is conditionally added or removed based on the each check. If the each check is phone, the button is disabled, preventing submission. Now we create a new file named signin.jsx inside a component folder and also move signup.jsx to this folder. Copy the code from signup.jsx and paste it into signin.jsx. Change the function component name from signup to signin. In app.jsx, we import the signin component in app.jsx and replace the signup component with the sign in component. Back to the sign in.jsx, replace the image sources with 2.jbg.
Then change the right side background color. Remove the name input field. Change the other input field's background color. We add an X1 tag with the text Welcome Back and style it using Bootstrap. Add a P tag below the password input with a message Forgot password and style it using Bootstrap classes. Change the registration button text to login and remove classes related to each check variable. Remove the use stay hook for each check as it's not used. Change the message already have an account to don't have an account yet. Move the link element inside the P tag. Separate it with a span and style them. Now we manage routes in your React application using React Router DOM. Routes define how your application responds to different URL paths. In app.jsec, first, import the necessary components from React Router DOM. Inside the browser router, use the routes component to define your application routes. Next, use the rules component to specific a path and the corresponding component to render for that path. When the URL is large, render the home component. Last, register for rendering the sign up component and last, login for sign in. We quickly create a simple home.js component using the RAFC shortcut. It simply displayed home content. Import the home component into app.jsec. With this root setup, you can access different pages in your application by visiting the corresponding URLs. Okay, this tutorial is over. The next video will cover creating a backend server to connect to your front-end application. User data will be stored in the database and JWT will be used to manage user authentication. Thanks for watching. See you later.